Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings so we do have a yellow rain warning issued for parts of the southeast today and of course the next few days we've got widespread yellow warnings across even northern parts uh, quite widespread as I said um, so it could be quite a few issues up and down the country with rainfall again it's not the individual amounts of rain it's the fact that the ground is very saturated so, so even sort of a uh, standard heavy amount of rain at the moment which you know wouldn't normally uh, it would be uh, be sufficient for a warning uh, is now potentially going to cause some issues so that's why we've got some yellow warnings in force for rain and we'll check those out at the start of the video we'll then have a look at the ukv have a look at the precipitation and the temperature in the next five days as it continues to look fairly unsettled with a lot of low pressure running off the atlantic with the scans even high to our east it's halting those lows meaning they're moving through much slower and it does mean that they dump a lot more rain on top of us and sort of stall giving us a lot of showers as well We'll then have a look at the longer range. We'll look at some more charts then than we normally do in our daily videos. Um, we did our final winter look ahead on Sunday. And as I said in that video, we're going to start incorporating some of those charts into our daily videos uh, when we do have updates. So we'll be having a look at these from the ECMWF week ahead charts um, all the way through to the middle of December in the Christmas period. We'll also be having a look at the zonal mean winds um, up above the northern hemisphere, up above the northern North Pole uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks as well to be showing what that is doing throughout from the troposphere up towards the stratosphere. And then of course we'll have a look at the GFS, GM, East and WF and the ensemble see what they're showing over the next few weeks. Now of course we have got that Scandinavian high that is continued to crop up within the model output. Today the operational runs uh, sort of backtracking a little bit on it but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't look at those too much detail at the moment um, as some people I've seen alluded to in the comments uh, and on Twitter we've been seeing the 12 o'clock GFS run going for a massive westerly and then mid, uh, the 6 o'clock run going for a massive easterly so the models are chopping and changing every single run so I wouldn't take these too literally today if we did see this can signal for persistent and consistent runs over the course of of the next couple of days, then we might change our consensus. But I still do think we're going to be seeing a SCAS and high influencing us for the next few weeks at least as we head into December. And could it pull off something considerably colder uh, than average? Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, definitely the mid to longer range um, weekly head, weekly look ahead charts from that East WF continue to show sufficient blocking. So do stay tuned for that. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Now, if you do look at the live radar, you can see generally it is fairly dry at the moment. Showers down in the south and the east and a few across parts of the East Midlands, Yorkshire into East Anglia. And then again, it comes some across Northern Ireland and Scotland. But we've got this big band of rain now. Uh, now inching into Cornwall and it will be bringing uh, significantly heavy rain across parts of the south over the course of this afternoon before spreading northwards into parts of the Midlands, East Anglia through this evening. Rush hour though should really only impact areas in central, southern and eastern England uh, but it could dump a lot of rain uh, and we do have a yellow warning issued for southeastern parts. Again, not for ridiculous amount of ranges from this event. Uh, it's going to have sizable amount of rain, you know, maybe an inch or two, uh, which shouldn't normally cause issues but it's because it's falling onto already very saturated ground uh, where we've seen a numerous number of these events over the course of the last few weeks. So yeah, it could be some issues around with that. Uh, but for the most part today it is fairly dry but it is cooler with westerly winds coming in uh, colliding with those easterly winds uh, where there's cold air actually bunching into Norway and Denmark at the moment uh, you probably see the boundary there with that weather front is between really quite cold Arctic air and milder Atlantic air uh, and this milder Atlantic air is actually getting squeezed by colder air exiting out of uh, Greenland and Canada that is heading our way as well uh, and it means over the next few days we're going to be generally quite cold into the weekend could even be seeing some snow over Scotland and widespread frosts for a few nights now if I do put in those two meter temperatures I'm calling this around midday uh, and you can see generally it isn't particularly mild at all of over the course of Sc uh, Scottish mountains you can see touching around freezing there over the highest pe peaks elsewhere very faint colors of yellow more blues showing more into the single digits maybe the far south and east getting towards sort of that 11 or 12 degree mark 
Now, if you go to the weather warnings, we do have that yellow rain warning issue today in the southeast that stretch all the way to 6 a.m. tomorrow and starts at 5 p.m. this afternoon. So just probably as you're watching this video. You can see 15 to 25 millimetres, so uh, about half an inch to an inch of rain is likely to fall widely, perhaps 30 to 40 millimetres over 12 hour periods. That's sort of an inch and a half. So not ridiculous amount of rainfall in itself, but as you can see here, with the ground already saturated, this may lead to some flooding. Also, gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour along the coast could be issue, uh, could cause some issues. High likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. As we move into Thursday, you can also see we do have more widespread yellow warnings. We've got a Scottish warning from 3 p.m. tomorrow until 6 p.m. on Friday. A spell of persistent and at times very heavy rain will develop during Thursday, continuing on Friday, leading to a risk of flooding. And it's sort of the remnants of this rain in the south that is pushing northwards uh, and sort of spiralling around because the Scandinavian high halts it moving further eastwards. So it sort of just spirals on top of us, dumping a lot of rain. So yeah, you can see potentially some more flooding risks. Again, maybe 50 to 70 millimetres over the higher ground of eastern Scotland and maybe 100 millimetres uh, across the hills of Angus and Aberdeenshire. Uh, again, high impact here, low end of the likelihood. So again, uncertain with the amount of rainfall that falls, but if the amount that could fall does fall, it will be high impact. So we'll have to see what happens with that. And there's a more widespread yellow warning across parts of northeast England, down into the Midlands, northwest England and northern Wales from tomorrow at midnight until, uh, well, tomorrow, uh, well, tonight really at midnight until tomorrow midnight. Heavy rain leading to a small chance of flooding and disruption. Outbreaks of rain, heavy at times, will move northwards across the Midlands, North Wales and Northern England during Wednesday night, persisting through much of Thursday. 30 to 40 millimetres it is likely to fall quite widely over a 24 hour period, so an inch and a half of rain, with a small chance of over 60 millimetres, so over two inches and perhaps up to 80 millimetres, which is three inches of rain. This brings a chance of flooding and disruption. The rain is expected to become less widespread and more intermittent during Thursday night. Again, high impact, low likelihood. Again, the remnants of that rain that's uh, entering into the north, uh, into the southwest, that's moving northeastwards at the moment, that will spiral around and just give all this heavy rain further northwards through Thursday and Friday. If you now go over to the UKV and look at what is happening with that rainfall, you can see uh, showers at the moment, but they die out over the course of this afternoon, and the heavy rain pushes into the south, and really, during the day, only really impacts M4 lines southwards. For rush hour, into the London area as well, for moving northwards slowly, and then you can see through uh, tonight into tomorrow, it just sits and spirals across northern England and Scotland, hardly moving and just sort of spiralling on its axis, just giving continual heavy rain through Thursday, quite a miserable day, uh, and eventually it just continues to dump all its precipitation on us before eventually peating away through Wednesday, uh, through, through sorry Friday into Saturday. Saturday could see an overnight frost in those clearer skies, we're in a wedge of colder air there, and then into Sunday we do see weather fronts bump into that cold air you could see snow over the high ground of northern england and scotland elsewhere though just cold rain and into sunday could be a cold but blustery uh, day with a lot of showers and then as we head into monday continued unsettled with again wintry showers over the higher ground you could even rule out maybe the odd uh, sleet shower or hail shower to lower levels as well at times so yeah turning much more cooler, uh, sort of more wintry into the weekend. Again, nothing unusual for this time of year is getting towards the middle to end of November. So colder air uh, and wintriness is not too unusual. Um, but yeah, come to a shock, uh, it's going to be a shock to the system considering we've been so mild recently. The reason for this is look at those upper air temperatures around the minus three to maybe minus five area, which is sort of typical conditions you need for snow. Uh, but again, you need to have embedded to get any widespread uh, wintriness. And you can see it is a very small wedge of cold air but it will give considerably colder than average conditions into the weekend we'll see this well on the max temperatures you can see today widely sort of eight to ten degrees maybe peaking 11 or 12 in the south and the east tonight frost maybe across parts from Papua Island and northern ireland again localized many areas dropping down to the mid to low single digits elsewhere though mid to high single digits through thursday afternoon you see those temperatures rising to maybe 10 11 in the south but widely sort of 7 to 10 degrees elsewhere and overnight once again dropping down towards the mid to high single digits friday another cool day maybe maxes of only 8 9 10 degrees 
peaking at 11 but not feeling particularly pleasant at all and then into saturday overnight you can see widespread condition down towards the low to single uh, low to uh, low single figures uh, across Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, widely around freezing, and across England, Wales, and Scotland, widely around that sort of two to four degree mark, locally colder than that. And through Saturday afternoon, really chilly, only six to eight degrees, really, maybe peaking at nine or ten in a few isolated spots. And then into Sunday, again, widely overnight, dropping down sort of two, three, four degrees. Again, could be colder than that in reality. All depends on the cloud amounts, which we're still sort of three or four days away. So it can still change. So I have to keep an eye on Friday and Saturday night, but could be some frost developing there. Uh, but quite chilly and Sunday looks quite likely hardly anywhere will reach double digits most likely uh, uh, most places will be six to eight degrees really quite cold across parts of scotland hardly getting above freezing so yeah it's getting really chilly this weekend and then eventually into monday look at that quite a widespread frost developing there temperatures getting down towards the low single figures uh, and again it, it, these are again uh, not particularly higher resolution. It is higher resolution compared to the other models we look at, but on, on sort of frosts uh, and individual temperatures, we'll likely see temperatures in rural areas get lower than this, down sort of freezing. So that's why there could be quite a bit of frost around through Monday morning as well. So three consecutive nights of quite cold conditions there. Again, not too unusual, but it will be a shock to the system compared to what we have had recently. So do now go on to the mid to longer range and we go to the ECMWF weekly mean anomalies. We'll have a look at these charts and then we'll go on to the uh, normal sort of GFS, GM, ECMWF and the ensembles. So you can see this week we've got the standard even high developing to our north and our east. Um, but we've still got low pressure coming in from the west. And what this does brings a battleground of easterly winds against westerly winds. And that's why I've seen cold weather towards the weekend. Nothing considerable, but it's moving the jet stream to the south, putting us on the cold side of the jets. So we're generally below average if we go to next week though you can see still very unsettled and this is sort of the pattern that all the normal charts are picking up uh, our daily video charts still the sky even high signal but that low pressure signal to our west is strengthening um, and that means that we are most likely going to stay fairly unsettled uh, not particularly cold still probably uh, average to slightly below average but nothing considerably cold and fairly unsettled as we head into December, things get more interestingly, uh, more interesting. See that low pressure signal starts to shift to our south and comes weaker, and that high pressure signal becomes stronger and more sustained to our north, and this would start to bring easterly bounce. The week after that, into the middle of December, look at all that blocking to our north. Easterly winds are highly likely with that, and again into the 12th to the 19th, the dead middle of of December here. This could be really cold. Because not only do we have blocking to our north, but we have low pressure anomalies towards Scandinavia uh, and into parts of Russia and Eastern Europe. This most likely is a blob of the tropospheric polar vortex, which contains the coldest air over the northern hemisphere, uh, or some of it. Uh, and this will mean that any easterlies we get, they will be, yeah, not just cold, but it could be very cold. Maybe minus 10 to minus 15 isotherm can move in. Um, which would be uh, really putting us into the freezer for the middle of December leading up to Christmas. Again, really will depend on what happens with the block. We've been continually seeing this move north and westwards, this high pressure, um, but it keeps getting slightly pushed back. Initially, it was sort of the end of November, the start of December. Now it's more the middle of December. So got to keep an eye on this, but this could go considerably colder than average and into the Christmas period, still got considerable blocking towards Greenland. This could be more of a northerly wind, but this could be a bit of a breakdown of that block towards the Christmas period. But then that could be really quite messy with mild rare masses trying to push back in. Then you could see marginal or considerable snow events there. So that is something to keep an eye on as well. The Eastern UF weekly mean anomaly charts are continuing to show extremely um, extremely interesting charts for uh, the start of winter. Uh, again, I've not seen this sort of consistency from these sort of charts for for, for quite a while uh, in terms of showing colder weather. Definitely this is suggesting a cold start to the winter, but we're yet to see it come into the 7 or 10 day time frame. Until it comes into the 7 or 10 day time frame, we cannot say for certain. Um, so we'll just have to continue to keep an eye on it and keep an eye on the models. If we do go over to the zonal mean winds uh, above the northern uh, hemisphere, up on the North Pole, again, 
we've been looking at the charts uh, pretty much most weeks on the winter look heads, uh, and you can see to our nor, uh, sorry, to uh, the upper end of the atmosphere from around 30 HPA to 1 HPA up in the stratosphere, we've got very strong westerly winds. Um, you can see around 35 to make, getting as high as maybe 60 meters per second, so really quite strong above average polar vortex winds. But also, surface much more neutral. Uh, westerly winds, which means that actually we could see being a reversal, uh, and that would suggest easterly or northerly winds. Um, and again, you, it's difficult to decipher exactly what we're seeing from this chart, but you look to the right chart, this is the anomaly, you can see there really is a stratospheric and tropospheric disconnect starting to appear. Considerably above average westerly winds up in the atmosphere, 10 to 20 meters per second above average in the, uh, in the stratosphere, in the troposphere, widely blues, sort of 10 to 15 meters per second slower than average. Again, not uh, not meaning there's uh, an easterly everywhere, but it's meaning it's below average um, throughout the next couple of weeks, which does mean easterly winds are more likely, disruption to the general westerly flow is likely, again, leading to this higher probability of blocking easterly, northerly winds, and generally colder than average weather. Again, this is only a slice of the atmosphere above the North Pole. Again, this just links to the UK. It doesn't directly give us colder weather, but whenever we see a slower than average um, a westerly winds above the North Pole, it always gives us an above average chance or uh, above average chance of colder weather. Um, but interestingly, seeing there is a disconnect because normally when you see these reds up in the stratosphere, you see them move down into the troposphere as well, and vice versa. Whenever you see blues up in the strat uh, stratosphere, you see it in the surface, but we're seeing an opposite or of uh, sort of reds up here, blues down here, which means there is a disconnect. They're not quite uh, causing each other. Um, sort of a line so that is something we need to keep an eye on because if they did connect within the next sort of month or two which is quite possible and you know quite probable as well we generally don't see them disconnect for more than a few weeks or a month or so if that did happen then we could see big westerlies and that could link to that milder and wetter and more westerly second half of the winter we had alluded to in the winter look heads so that is something we also need to keep an eye on but if we do now go over to the uh, normal charts, look at the GFS, GM, Eastern OF and the ensembles. You can see for the GFS today we've got that big Scandinavian high trying to pull cold, colder air into parts of northwest Europe, but a big low pressure pulling in westerly winds. The low pressure dominates really, uh, and yes we do see cold air pushing for a time, sort of getting wedged, uh, wedged in there. But low pressure generally is in control. That high pressure blocking in around a week's time starts to dissipate and we do go westerly. We continue to see high pressure trying to build up towards Scandinavia. But here the tropospheric polar vortex holds on quite considerably. And we generally go under higher pressure uh, and it's quite uh, quite uh, settled. Probably seen an inversion here. Interestingly, low tropospheric polar vortex is heading towards Scandinavia, so that could set up something colder into December. But today, the GFS is not pulling in easily in really uh, at all. That is complete contrast to what we saw yesterday. And this is, again, this is another example of the models flip-flopping, as they've repeatedly done over the last week or so. Um, so we have to see exactly what happens, um, what happens with this and why, you know, there's no point looking at these individual runs or putting too much weight in them is because as we see in the GEM and the Eastern Blue F, they have opposite pattern. This has got high pressure sat right over the top of us. The GEM and the Eastern Blue F at day 10, uh, I know this is 384 hours, but at day 10 here, the GFS definitely has high pressure trying to build in. If we do put on those pressure charts, you can see higher pressure is trying to build in here, um, but as we see in the GFS, uh, so the GM and the Eastern UF, low pressure is firmly in control day 10. So huge contrast today uh, between the models, um, not only between the individual runs, but also between the models' previous runs as well. So that's why there's a lot of volatil volatility at the moment. And looking at individual model runs, it's probably not the best thing to do, but you know, You've got to keep an eye on them, of course, and see what uh, what they're showing, and of course try and spot trends. 
If you do go for the GMs, you have that does compare out to day 10. Again, high pressure to our east, uh, pulling in an easterly wind, or at least trying to. And this is where we could see a little bit of snow over Scotland, maybe early next week, with low pressure sliding to our south. Cold air trying to move to our north from that Scandinavian high could give us colder conditions there, potentially, before eventually we do um, we do go more of a westerly at day 10. Still blocking to our north and our east, but generally quite westerly, cool uh, and cold, in fact below average really snow over northern hills probably but um, it's fairly unsettled not ridiculously cold We're just seeing cold on the average condition because the jet stream is shoved to our south and again if we do go to the north hemisphere view you see a lot of blocking or higher pressure trying to penetrate into the arctic not quite making it out but again this complete contrast to what we've been seeing yesterday from the models which were pulling an easterly winds at 8 10 as I continue to say, there's going to be a lot of volatility, uh, and again, you've just got to keep an eye on the ensembles, the uh, weekly look-ahead charts, as those are probably the best things to be having a look at, um, uh, and of course, keeping an eye on the deterministic runs, um, as I know they will be changing quite a lot, but it, it, we've got to keep an eye on them, as they are the highest resolution models we do have at this time frame, um, so they are uh, sort of leading the way, I guess. If we do finish by having a look at the ECM the WF charts, uh, again, westerly winds pushing at the moment, cryoliding against easterlies, but westerlies winning out at day 10, we stay fairly unsettled and cold on the colder side of the jet. Look at those upper air temperatures, and you can see generally below average, mild to trying to push into the south, but around freezing or below that at 850 HBA quite widely. Uh, again, no massive signal of easterly winds here, complete reversal to what we saw in yesterday's run. So, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Um, um, but again, a lot of volatility at the moment. If we do finish by having a look at the ensemble members, if we do start on the GFS, see what they're showing over the next few weeks. goes up to the 2nd of December, and you can see generally we are around average. Maybe a degree or two either side at times, but more than not likely we are average. Very unsettled though, so a lot of precipitation around, uh, feeling quite cold as well. Even when we do see above average upper air temperatures, most likely be accompanied by cloud and rain and weather front, so it will be uh, will be quite cold under that. So yeah, considerably colder than average conditions um, are likely at times, but also you, know, you might see some mild weather as well. Uh, but yeah, no real sign of anything majorly cold, but of course, as we saw on those Eastern Moon F weekly, uh, weekly charts, um, they were not showing anything really cold for at least two weeks, you know, towards the last couple of days of November and start of December, which we can only just see here. Again, we need to keep an eye on it over the next few weeks. And again, if we have a look at the ECMWF on summer members over the course of the next few weeks, again, very similar, generally around average. Some cold runs appearing in the longer term, but still some very milder runs as well. Um, and then a consistent signal of very unsettled. So again, it's something to keep an eye on. There's a lot of model vol volatility around at the moment. Um, uh, you know, I'll tell you right now, we're not going to get it 100% right. It's going to be changing. One day, we're going to be certain there's going to be easterly winds. The next day, uh, you know, the models will completely reverse, uh, and then they'll reverse back the next day. So we're just going to keep an eye on it, really. Uh, and of course, keep up, keep you up to date on these videos. Um, uh, and uh, the one thing I can say for certain is winter is going to start very interesting. Regardless if we do see this very cold weather come off, the blocking pattern, uh, the um, disconnection in the uh, stratosphere and the troposphere in terms of the polar vortex winds, um, all of that culminating together means it's going to be an interesting start to winter. Whether we do see anything ridiculously cold, anything ridiculously mild or stormy, we've just got to keep an eye on it and the models are going to be all over the place over the next few weeks. That's the one thing I can assure you. But hopefully they do start to converge on a solution over the course of the next few weeks and we'll just have to see what happens. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.